everybody. Hope you're doing marvellously well. We are going to be reviewing a pair of speakers from Eve. It is the SC205s. These are $1,000 a pair. The characteristic of Eve's so far that we've used, and I think we've used about three or four pairs now, is they usually have a much greater extended low end for their size. We recently did the Adams, as you know, and really enjoyed the kind of detailed mid-range, but felt like they didn't have that extended low end you might expect. So there's always a bit of a give and take, isn't there? So let's see how these Eves sound, the SC205s. First of all, let's unbox them. All right, <laughs> they sent them straight from Germany. So, do, 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 do. I know, my famous lack of unboxing. So they're pretty decent size. I mean, $1,000 for a pair is not cheap, but it's not also not unbelievably expensive. So if you're starting off with a pair of really small monitors, you know, that cost you two, $300, this is probably quite a big upgrade. Oh, okay, so it looks like, first of all, before we've done anything, Looks like there's a little protection there for the tweeter. Power cable. And if you notice, we emptied out the top of the console here. We've got the ISO pucks that they can go on top because we know we get lots of people complaining about decoupling. Although I will say that the stands that are on top of the console do actually have a rubber mat on them as well. And they are specifically designed as speaker stands to go on an SSL 4000. So, Frankly, they kind of are decoupling, but we're gonna decouple the decoupling, just so there's no complaints. Okay, power cable. Let's take a look at the speaker. So they're small, but they're quite heavy, you know, considering their size. I'm guessing 205 means two-way, and five-inch main driver. That would be my guess. We're gonna go check out the specs in a second. I've asked them, they told me they have already been burnt in and that their speakers arrive burnt in. I get asked that question as well. I'm trying to cover all the bases here. Okay, here they are. So like I can say there's some substantial weight in there. Oh yeah, you have this setting on the front here where you can increase the highs. Uh, what else you got? The lows. I mean, basically, you can, and also you've got an overall kind of adjustment of volume on it as well. But we'll get into that as well. On the back, looks like you've got an RCA input, you've got XLR input, um, obviously power on and off. We're obviously gonna use the XLR. Volume, filter, and not used. We'll go and look at the instructions, but it might be that you can set it for what kind of environment you've got in as well. And of course, as I may or may not have said at the beginning, they are giving us a pair to give away. So you can enter to win them as well. It's very generous of them to allow us to give them away. Okay, we're gonna put them up. Okay, so we have Eve Audio's product page up for the SC205s. It says SC205 is a silver cone two-way system with a five inch woofer. We guessed that, didn't we? Two-way system, SC205, five inch. Extended base frequency response, outstanding sorry, an astounding output level. The 205 will easily fill your room with exceptional sound. Well, you know, our room's not small, it's not massive. It's a pretty decent con size control room. You can fit a whole band in here and work. Um, so, and they're small, but the eaves we've tried before, the low end is absolutely insane. I have no idea how they do it. So these little things, see what they do. I'm very, very excited. Let's see what they say about Tech Talk. Uh, the very stiff diaphragm is honeycomb structure, like other models, uh, is driven by sophisticated low distortion. Copper cap magnet system uses a one inch voice call responsible for delivering a great linear excursion. Is that like you go on holiday, a linear excursion? I don't know, whatever. It's the AMT tweeter, which is not a ribbon apparently, but to many of us, we call it ribbon. It's an air motion transformer, base port design. It's all in the geometry. One of the downside effects of port compression is base distortion as the volume goes up. Uh, we opted for a large rear rectangular port with no hard edges. We've got them on the ISO pucks. So thank you, ISO pucks. We have the little speakers on that. And it's also on the plinth, which is specially designed for speakers, which is then sitting on 
on the console. So it's decoupled from the decoupling of the decoupled. Results, high pressure sound levels with tight and punchy bass responses that don't cause port distortion. Okay, I want to listen to them. Let's give it a listen. And remember, you can enter to win this pair of lovely speakers. So we've got tracks. So what I like to do if you're fresh to this is I like to listen to tracks that I've recorded and mixed in this room. The reason why I do that is because I recorded and mixed them in this room. Meaning I know how this room sounds. I know when something that I've mixed sounds great. I know what it sounds like in this room. So it's really, it really helps me. If I'm going to listen to other people's music or program music, that's fine. But this is stuff, these are mixes that I'm used to sitting in, speaker, in front of speakers with. So I'm going to go to something super open, first of all. And then I'm going to go to something super compressed. So the first thing we're going to go to super open is, of course, the Jonas Smith tracks, which were from Sunset Sound, which is a live off the floor recording. So this isn't really going to show off low end extensiveness, but it is really going to show off depth in speakers, whether they're able to reproduce that. I mean, it's ridiculous. I don't know how Eve do it. I know it's a, a, a conversation. You close your eyes. You're expecting to look around and see speakers about this big. The kick is like, it's only a little kick, but the low end is gray on it. I was tired. My mind was I mean, we put the speakers up, <laughs> but I feel like I'm being punked. Eric, are you punking me? <laughs> this is love. They were talking about excursion, but dispersion. I mean, it's huge. It sounds so much wider than they really are. And the low end's so extended. I would be caught by like the ambience on the river. I've got to be honest, I've got a real soft spot for, for this company because Roland and Kirsten, uh, husband and wife team, husband and wife company based in Berlin, just really good people, very generous. I, I mean, I know this song, I made this recording. It's not compressed, it's not EQ'd, it's off the floor. I did it at Sunset Sound. $1,000 for a pair of speakers that sounds this big and is that small. Maybe the isopucks help as well. Thank you, isopucks. Yeah, it's definitely no vo There's no vibrations going on. You can't feel anything vibrating. It's a really clean, powerful, really clean, powerful low end. I have a. I've had a really hard time trying to recommend speakers in a sort of a mid price. And when I mean mid, I mean the mid lower side. Because, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about the Cali LP6s. They're, they're pretty much considered the best in class these days. So many of you, and we use them, and they're at the $300. And then there is those Atoms, uh, or the AX7s, they're like the $1,200, $1,300. And then there's a sort of a big gap between in the middle, like, you know, somewhere like the 800 to a 1,000-ish area. Could these be the speakers? There's a characteristic, it seems to me, in all the of the many, many speaker demos we've done now, there's characteristics in speakers and sounds. Focal have one of the smoothest top ends ever. It's unbelievable how detailed and smooth their high end is. The Adams have a really good, I think a pleasing kind of slightly aggressive mid-range, which I actually enjoy. It reminds me of classic speakers like, of course, my AR-18s 
or NS10s, but not as aggressive as a pair of NS10s, which are ridiculously imbalanced in the mid-range. 7 dBs at 1.5K, just like, boom, rip your head off mid-range. Um, all of these have attributes that I like, but it does seem like EVE are pretty much killing it in the small monitor with extended low end. The, what would you call that? Fight above your weight? Fight above your class, something like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and listen to Matt Lang's remix, the wonderful Lack, the wonderful Matt Lang who remixed Close Song because it's pretty modern and compressed and EQ'd and limited. <laughs> I don't have another pair of monitors up to do a straight comparison, but I can tell you this. I've got the, the volume set slightly over halfway up on the knob, and that's freaking loud. I was cranking it. This is loud. I'm going to listen to now is a track I did with, well, this, this lineup is incredible. So it's Lee Sklar playing bass, Danny Serafin from Chicago playing drums, Dick Wagner, who was obviously in Alice Cooper's band and uh, you know wrote Only Women Bleed, who was uh, played guitar um, famously on a couple of uh, sessions on Air with Aerosmith in the early days, and was in The Frost, and is just a freaking all-round badass. A very good friend of mine, he died a couple of years ago, and just Mark Farner's on this track from Grand Funk Railroad, and this is a live recording with vocal overdubs, but the band is live from Sunset Sound and it's for a charity track for St. Jude's Children's Hospital, but let's have a listen. If I had the time, I could change the Yeah, I'm really impressed. I mean, we can keep listening, but I'm impressed. They are fighting above their weight. Um, if you've got a small studio and you've only got enough room for a pair of monitors of this size, you know, you're gonna have to spend a schnizzle ton more money to be able to get something that's better sounding at this, this, this size. <laughs> I have a question. I'm going to listen to, for myself, I'm going to listen, I need to listen to something with some aggressive electric guitars to see how that mid-range is. That's kind of three to five byte. Um, all right, there's a track called Fire I did with Alex Calice. Okay, let's go to Little Empire, Half a Heart. So they're not aggressive in the 3 to 5K area. I'm not hearing rip your head off guitars. I would say compared with AR-18s, NS-10s, 
Genelec 1032s, and of course the Adams, they're a little softer in the high mids. So they don't have that overly pronounced high mid aggression. This is Robert John the Wreck. This is Georgia Mud. <laughs> Okay, so interesting, went to the solo and it was exactly how I remember it, sitting right on the track, inheriting the same space as the vocal. So they're just not pronounced in that area. I wonder if they have a, let's have a quick look. You know, I know obviously frequency charts are very subjective, but let's see if they have one. It's got 53 to 21 hertz, kilohertz, but it says at minus three. So what they're saying is at minus three down, it goes equally from 21K up here down to, well, the way you're looking at 21K up here and 53. So it's fairly flat. So it's only three dB down at 53. You know, with that porting on the back, I wonder maybe about 35, 40, where you start hearing a little bit of a subbiness. I don't know how far down it's going to be. But bearing in mind, most kick drums that you're dealing with, at least in classic rock and rock, and you know, not, not sort of EDM and definitely not hip hop with um, uh, super subby kicks, you know, you're usually shoving around 50 or 60. Um, 60 if you're a Neve guy, 50 if you're an API. So didn't hear any, when I was listening to all the stuff I've mixed, I didn't hear any lack of low end, anything, anything that would have bothered me to be able to mix someone. Okay, so we, we're, not, we're not doing any of this cut or boost stuff. We're listening to them flat at the moment. But as you can see, you can boost the low end here by 3 dB. It looks like it starts to, starting at about 400, gently going up there. And then you can do the same from 1K and above, the high filter. Um, you can do a low and high combination, get it a bit smiley faced. And then you can do a cut on that. And then there's the desk filter where you know you're going to try and get rid of any kind of frequency that's built up on that. I'm really honestly, with all the decoupling going on, the decoupling of the decoupling, I'm not really hearing that much. We could mess around with it, but the reality is, is like the reason why I do these comparisons, as I've said before, is like this is the environment I work in. So my ears are just telling me how does it sound compared with what I'm used to when it comes to mixing and making records. So I found online, I found some spec sheets here. Pretty good. Pretty good. It looks like it's got a slight bump around about 60, just above 60, 70, and then dips back down. It looks like it's got like 60, 70, 80 kind of little bump. Not much. It's just like a, a dB or so. And then it's pretty flat ish. And this is listening at like 90 dB, they did the test. Pretty flat ish in the low mids, maybe even slightly, slightly dips, maybe a dB down the low mids. And that's pretty flat all the way along. It does seem like there's a little bit of super, super highs, which was interesting because this is Matt Lang's. He had like this kind of t -t 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 high frequency, like over 10K kind of hi-hat going on, which I could hear quite pronounced. And there's like a slight, slight, like maybe a dB or two up about that. Otherwise, pretty flat. So what's the conclusion? Conclusion is not overly aggressive in the high mids. It's sounding pretty flat there. If you're gonna compare it and you're used to NS10s, AR18s, um, you're gonna probably think that it's not as aggressive as you're used to in the mid range. Um, there is a little extra tiny kind of lift at the 10K and above, which is quite pleasing, but it's only a dB or two. There's a tiny like dB lift in about the 60 to 80, but again, only very, very slight. And then there's a slight dip, which is pretty audible here in the low mids. Again, maybe like a dB down. So it actually makes for quite pleasing music making. You know, flat is not flat anyway, as I'm sure you know. Each room has its own set of issues and will may or may not decrease or increase any of those things. But generally speaking, exceptionally good low end, extended low end for a very, very small monitor. 
also very, very loud for a small monitor. And uh, $1,000 is not a small amount of money, but for something that seems a step above, you know, things up to the sort of 800-ish kind of mark, I do really feel like you're getting really good bang for the buck. We are gonna test out the Atom A7Xs, which are about $1,500 actually. So they're a big step above, but I think they're probably a sort of in the ballpark. That, that to me has always been the next step. There's been the Callies and monitors about $300. And then there's been a definite massive improvement to me at about the $1,500 mark. This feels like to me of the 100 or so monitors that we've been through, we have about 40 pairs here as it is, these definitely poking their head out in their price range. There's a couple of things I like. I like the IN5s. I think that they are great value for money. But for a bang for the buck, these are pretty hard to beat. And I would say if you've got a smaller environment, which frankly, 99% of the people I know working now are in very, not they might be A, in a small room and B, just in a corner in like one section of a small room because they've got a bed and they've got other things in that room as well. These like seem like really good bang for the buck. For my son, who's only 14, coming on 15 years old, for his setup, you know, around his monitor, I think these could be really, really good. Um, and I think for people that want a higher quality fidelity speaker, don't want to break the bank, but want a high quality, guys like me that want to go home, maybe not stay till one o'clock in the morning editing, Eric, um, you know, might want to go home and listen in a really nice environment on a good sounding pair of high quality speakers that they can have set up in a spare room. Big thumbs up. I knew they would deliver. Eve always do great stuff. Uh, Roland, as you know, or if you don't know, has been a speaker designer for a long time. And he was one of the speaker designers over at Adam. And it's, you know, Adam has spawned three companies now, Adam, Head, and Eve. All of them make really great speakers because obviously all the people involved in that camp are very talented. And there's a reason why we all know those speakers. Um, thank you ever so much, Ronan and Kirsten. Um, please don't forget to enter below to win a pair of these. If you do use Eve speakers, let me know your experiences. Um, it's really important to us that we get involved in the community and help each other out. I take, I really do take this quite seriously. For instance, uh, a particular speaker company had a sub that um, had a problem and it was a member of our community. And I read that it had a problem and the company looked after them really, really well. And those are the kinds of people I get behind. So when we're, when we're talking about products and we like them, it has to be full service. We have to know that they're also gonna care about their customers. And there's been a couple of companies over the years that I have not worked with. And if you don't see them, and we're not talking about it, it's probably because of bad customer experiences. I used to use a pair of headphones, which will be completely nameless, and that Eric used to use as well. And we had the same pair of headphones. And when they went wrong, we sent them back to the distributor, who we were told to send them back to repair. When they came back, one of the pairs was wired out of face. And the guy was incredibly rude to Eric, just talked down to him. And I wrote to the, the, the main company in Europe and was like, we're not working with you because you took a month to get it repaired. It came back, the guy was like telling Eric off like he wouldn't know what was out of phase. So it's very important to me that we work with companies that care about the customers. And um, so always feel free to tell me your personal experiences on stuff because this is a proper community that is here to help each other. It's a little bit like we're doing the Atmos videos at the moment. Do you know why I'm doing the Atmos videos? I don't make any money. Nobody's paying me to do any of these Atmos videos. Dolby have not waved any cash in my face. But you know what? All of my friends that are producers and engineers and mixers are all really busy doing Atmos work. Netflix is having everything mixed in Atmos. All the record companies are going back through and mixing everything in Atmos. So I'm just here to help people out and realize like if you can and you want to get into this, there's a lot of work there. Some of my friends that weren't that busy are now exceptionally busy doing Atmos mixes. You can have an opinion on whether you think it's the future of music or not. It's absolutely fine. But it's my job here to help you and tell you when there's opportunity and when it arises. Thanks ever so much. So long, farewell, la vida, say au revoir. Adios. Don't forget to enter to win. Link down below. Goodbye.